on Outback Truckers. Rustling up a wild load, Matt Adams hits his roughest ride ever. It's the time I can't see the road. Carrying precious freight, whoa, 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 whoa. Macca McCready sails into trouble. We've lost the strap. And in dense forest, the Stevens brothers battle the backwoods and bogs to rescue their bees. It's a bloody nightmare in here. Hey, hey, hey. On a remote track in rural New South Wales, Daryl Wright's in deep trouble. There's a bull out, round this side. An 850 kilo rodeo bull has escaped from his badly damaged truck. Hey, 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 hey. It's his boss, Matt Adams, star performer, Sports Machine. It's bad enough being any bull, but it's even worse being Sports Machine. He's one of Matt's best bulls. This is not what you want to hear. Matt's animals are his business and his passion. They're our living, that's what we do. Um, they're big, strong, angry animals. And we really nurture them and look after them. Perfect high energy diets. They're true athletes. On this run, he's hauling 40 of his best horses, while in a second truck, Daryl handles 20 of Matt's prize bulls. Start in perfect motion. And they're heading to the biggest and best rodeos in Australia. Their journey began at Matt's farm, outside Dubbo, New South Wales. The destination, a base camp in Mareeba, Queensland. At over 2,000 kilometres, it's a massive trek. Like travelling from Paris to Rome and back again. But after just 100 kilometres, Daryl's stranded with damage to his truck. What damage has it done? That, all the brackets have let go. The crate holding the bulls has broken loose, smashing into Daryl's cab. The brackets that hold the crate on them let go, allowing the crate to slide forward. To make matters worse, a gap's opened up, allowing Star Bull's sports machine to escape. I don't want to get too close. Um, yeah, he won't be in a real good mood. Alone in the dead of night, Daryl must be on high alert. I don't want to spook him. Sports machine's a temperamental bull with a mean reputation. In his four-year career, he's beaten and bruised over 100 riders. At last, help is at hand. Um, just there yeah, where that red light is there. Yep. A passing farmer shows Daryl the way to a nearby paddock. The plan is to herd the runaway bull into it. But first, Daryl has to find him. We've spotted the bull now, he's here in the trees. Load up. Lock up. There you go, boy. Boy. While Daryl has sports machine in his sights. Boy. Up you go, Sporty. Hey, hey, hey. Boy. Suddenly. Boy. Back at his truck. There's a bull out, around this side. Another bull has broken out. Daryl's in double trouble. If he can't get the bulls back on the truck quickly, he risks missing a job worth $60,000. But if he loses Sports Machine, he'll lose a bull that Matt regards as priceless. On the island wilderness of Tasmania, B truckers Ewan and Neil Stevens are stuck fast midway through a vital rescue mission. This just puts us way beyond the eight ball. In a forest 300 kilometres away, the bitter cold of winter is biting hard. Millions of the Stevens bees are running out of food. If Ewan and Neil can't get out of this hole, they risk losing their bees and their business. The Stevens have operated a family-owned honey business for over a century. Twice a year, they take on an arduous journey, moving millions of bees between their summer and winter homes. If you have a breakdown and goes wrong, you know, you're up shit creek without a paddle because you can't get no one in here to help you. 
from their honey factory in Mole Creek, they're two days into a series of runs deep into the heritage forests of Western Tasmania, taking on 1,200 kilometres of the island's roughest roads. It's a make or break mission. No bees means no honey. But right now, you and stranded with a full load of 24 hives. The forklift is critical to the whole operation. He must get it out. To escape, Ewan sent out an SOS to a local farmer. It's down to the tractor to pull him free. The front wheels are out, but the rear wheels jammed sideways. The whole forklift's tilting dangerously at an angle. With a top-heavy load, it won't take much to tip it over. I know good, Josh. You have to go out there. Otherwise, they'll just swing over and tip her over. They need to get the angle of the pull just right, or risk losing the hives and thousands of bees. Oh, as it go everywhere, smash them to pieces, well, I would get hurt too. Time for one more try. At last, the vital run is done. It always feels good when they're in their spot. The stress goes out. But it's just the halfway mark. There's another five million bees still to be moved. Tomorrow, the Stevens will take their trucks deep into the heart of a wild forest. With winter here, they're running out of time. And soon, they'll be running out of road. In the coastal town of Mooloolabar, Queensland, Maka McCready is dealing with some seriously delicate freight. It's so easy to damage a hull. Put load where the load's not designed to go and before you know it, you've got a major catastrophe on your hands. Maka's been driving trucks for 30 years. The 52-year-old's speciality is moving expensive yachts from coast to coast, the hard way. Over the next seven days, he's heading from Maloolabar across the length of the continent to the port of Fremantle in Western Australia. At almost four and a half thousand kilometres, that's further than London to the North Pole. Mac has been hired to deliver Allegria, a $300,000 lightweight racing yacht. She's agile, fragile, and to her owner, worth every cent. Worth the box. Built to go real fast. But she was never designed to be hauled through the guts of the outback on the back of a truck. One loose stone, pothole, or one slip at the wheel is all it takes to turn this into this. As other boat truckers have discovered, it's a huge responsibility and Macca's first job is to get one boat off his truck and Allegria on. OK, whenever you're ready, mate, it's looking good. Lifting a yacht is always stressful. I don't like this bit. Under here, I don't like this. But Macca's supervised hundreds of lifts before. Can you walk a floor with Mick about 300? It should be straightforward. OK, take her up. But suddenly... I don't think you're going to get enough height, mate. The slings on the boat lifter are too long. While it's not his responsibility, Mac is kicking himself. I should have looked at that. We'll get there. We will. Well, we've got to get there. Yeah. Can't spend the rest of my life here. Macca needs to unload this boat today, or he'll start his next run a full day behind schedule. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lower back straight down, mate. To shorten the slings, they'll have to lower the boat back down. Just lower it down and 
Keep it going, mate. But it must be put back in precisely the same position. If not, the stress on her hull could puncture it. Got to go over that way, mate. If you can get her that way. Whoa, 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 whoa. The lift's going from bad Hold it. to worse. Nah, it's not sitting level. The 13-ton boat is leaning dangerously to one side. No, 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 don't do that. He has a continent to cross, and Macca hasn't even left the yard. Whoa, 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 whoa. But already, his freight and his reputation hang in the balance. Right now, this shouldn't be happening. There's a bull out, around this side. Daryl Wright is fighting to keep a crisis from turning into a full-blown disaster. A second rodeo bull has escaped. Boss Matt Adams' family business is at stake. His wife Rachel has raced from home to join the hunt. It's good to see he's not injured at all. Yeah, Sporty looked all right too, so. They're trying to herd both bulls into an open paddock to secure them. There it is. If they spook the 850 kilo beasts, they could charge. Light up. Lock up. Daryl's straining to keep track of the bulls. There it is. If one charges at him now, he'll never see it coming. Just a few more metres, and they'll be secure. Up he goes, Forty. Hey. Watch. Ah, there he goes. Finally, he's in. He's in. Everyone's safe. Now the race is on to catch up with Matt and make the rodeo. Tasmania. It's a 5 a.m. start for the Stevens brothers. They're heading deep into forest country to pick up another load of precious beehives. The dense wilderness is so remote, there's only one way in and out. By train. Ewan and Neil must load 14 tonnes worth of trucks onto two specially built rail carriages. The trick is, these carriages are exactly the same width as their trucks. The main thing here is get your trucks on nice and straight, otherwise you'll clip the bridge with the trucks up further. To line them up and get them on there perfectly. The slightest mistake could see the two trucks and the whole job come crashing down. With the trucks on board, it's time to take a unique railway ride. For 17 years, the boys have ridden this same narrow, winding path. But today, something's different. The tracks have recently been replaced. This is a new section of rails. You've just got to make sure they put it back in the right spot. Otherwise, you end up in the rocks. If they haven't been laid exactly as before, it could spell trouble. They're pretty close to the bank, aren't they? You wouldn't want to put your finger down, that's for sure. Wouldn't be nothing left. biting run, it's time once again to swap rail for road. While Neil's safely off, Ewan's 40-year-old vintage truck won't be so easy. His nephew Josh must help him out. Fuel tank on this truck actually hits on the ramp, so I've got to get this board in the right spot to lift the front wheel up enough to clear the fuel tank. Ewan's truck runs on petrol, not diesel. Get this wrong 
and his tank could rupture, spilling flammable fuel everywhere. This isn't good. In Queensland, Maka McCready is racing to stabilise a 13-ton yacht no, don't, don't pull it in. that's teetering on the edge of disaster. Right now, this shouldn't be happening. He needs to carefully cradle the boat's weight. Keep going with it, mate. Before the crane that's holding it lets go. We've got to under the swings. So we've got to reprop it so it doesn't fall over, mate. In 30 years, Mac has never damaged a boat. He's determined not to start now. Oh, what a cluster. Every support must be centimetre perfect. Hold it! Finally, the last wood block's in place. OK. Just start to lower it down for me, mate. Now, for the moment of truth. Whoop. The boat's secure. With daylight fading, now Macca needs to move fast. You've got a bit on right now. The straps need to be shortened and the boat lifted off his truck before dark. All right, we can take him up there. Right up. We're styling. We're in Queensland. The boat's off. With minutes of daylight left, Macca's survived the shipwreck. Next morning, Macca needs to load his new passenger, Allegria, a $300,000 racing yacht. Adding to his stress, her owner has come to watch. Don't drop it, Macca. This is, this is always a sweaty bit. Allegria's solid one-ton keel has already been loaded. Now Macca needs to carefully position the hull. It's made from lightweight carbon fibre. One mistake, and it could crack like an egg. Get you to travel her forward, say, 300. She's almost in position when Macca spots a problem. We're not going to make it. Allegria's bow is too close to the massive keel. Nah, we're not going to make it. She won't fit on the truck. We've got to bring her back to clear the bulb. Macca will have to start again from scratch. After a nightmare start, rodeo truckers Matt and Daryl are finally riding together. Daryl's truck is fixed and the bulls are safely back on board. As the sun sets, it's a relief to reach their overnight stop. Here they'll unload their precious animals for food and rest. Well, I treat them like babies and part of the family. But these babies are almost as heavy as a small car and can reach speeds of 35 kilometres per hour. At the end of the day, they will run over you. While the bulls are fearsome, the horses are easily spooked and even quicker. One slip could be fatal. As much as you're trying to preserve them, you probably should preserve yourself a little bit, sometimes. Next day, Matt needs to be on his toes again for another serious challenge. We've got the interesting bit in Carvis, 130 k's, it's treacherous dirt, where you don't want to be breaking down out there. Ahead is the town of Mount Garnet. Matt's 37 metre double road train is too big to travel through it. He'll have to take an alternative route, a barren 130 kilometre stretch of dirt road. The weather's not looking real good, makes you a bit nervous. The boys will split up. In the shorter truck, Daryl will stay on the bitumen, while Matt takes on the dirt. Hello, welcome to the Utan Road. Taking it from two hours to about five hours, just depending on the condition of the road. Now, 
Matt's driving without backup. And out of nowhere comes a dust storm. Suddenly, he's driving on instinct. So most of the time I can't see the road, let alone if there's anything on coming. Ewan Stevens has hit serious trouble. His petrol tanks collided with a rail carriage. He must carefully inch his way off. Get it wrong and the fuel tank could rupture. The truck's safe. But the fuel tank? Intact. The boys can push on. The next pickup of 260 hives is located at the top of a steep forest trail. It's a tight, twisting gauntlet of crumbling wet dirt. It's not been looked after, the road's deteriorating really bad. For Ewan and Neil's trucks, it's a brutal challenge. For their bees, it's do or die. The track's all grown over. It's not very good at all. If they lose traction up here, it could be fatal. See the slide off edge here, it's a sheer cliff over side. You are cut off from everything in here if something goes wrong. There is no way out. It's a bloody nightmare in here. It's too steep. I'm losing traction. While Ewan's struggling to stay on the road, Ahead, Neil and Josh have been brought to a halt. But not by the dirt, the climb or a breakdown, but by this. We're not going to make it. Macker is struggling to load a fragile $300,000 yacht onto his truck. We've got to bring her back. If she won't fit now, she never will. Ready? Macker and his team need to be accurate to the millimetre. Yeah, that's a smaller one, Al. Her bum's that way and her bow's that way. If we come down, and then we'll push her. OK. Keep coming. Keep going. OK, Nick. Good. Allegria's on board. That's her, boys. But only just. She's on. She's looking good. With the mast also secured, Macca's truck's 25 metres long. 4.3. Metres yeah. high and almost four metres wide. With a load this size, Macca will need help. Over the next seven days, pilot Andy will ride shotgun, managing traffic and watching Macca's load. Nervy time, nervy time right now. We've done about 15k. You think you got it right, you hope you got it right and you're always looking for something to go wrong. How's that rig looking when it goes over those bumps, Andy? It's wobbling a bit in the back, very back. The uneven road surface is making Allegria's mast bounce, causing a problem. So we've lost a strap. If the bouncing loosens another strap, Allegria could become dangerously unstable. Macca needs to stop. I'm going to get off this road but he's surrounded by heavy traffic on a narrow highway. If he doesn't get off the road soon, he could risk losing his load. I can't see the road, let alone if there's anything going coming. Matt is driving near blind. The cause, a pair of triple road trains ahead, throwing up a thick cloud of dust. I hope these boys let me know if there is anything coming. In their wake, Matt's struggling to spot the road hazards. Look at big holes. Don't hit him, he's going to do some real damage. And without clean air, 
his engines choking. Matt's desperate to find a stretch of road wide enough to pass. Finally, Matt has a clear view. It's vital as these roads take their toll on mind and body. You take a left sort of road at the end of the day and when it's bad enough when you're fresh, it's not like uh, driving up the freeway. You're watching all the time. One little mistake out here across. The Stevens boys have been brought to a halt by the last problem they expected to find. This gate's never been locked on us before. We've got no choice left to smash a lock on the gate. I've got to get in here, there's no way out. You're cut off from everyone, so you've got to deal with it. As Ewan prepares to smash the lock, there's a surprise in store in the glove box of their borrowed four-wheel drive. Yep. Oh, it's a big relief, actually. There's only one key to get in and out of it, so it was just lucky it was in full drive. At last, the boys have made it to their hives. They haven't seen them for six months. Now that winter's here, the risk is the bees will be dead and the first signs aren't good. We've lost about 30,000 bees. We can't get in here a real lot. We couldn't get queens back to them, so they died. We couldn't do nothing about it. But fortunately, the majority of the bees have survived. Now it's time to bring all 260 hives home for the winter. The race is on to get loaded and moving before daylight's gone when the temperature will drop rapidly. I'll be happy when they're on the train and out of it and we're driving off the train. The trucks are carrying 21 tonnes of hives. On dirt tracks, it's a dangerous combination. The hives are just sliding because the track's so rough, they're moving on the floor of the truck. Very steep going down here. And today, there's an added hazard. The moss in here makes a road very, very slippery. The slick moss is like driving on black ice. It's not a case of if Ewan loses traction, but when. It still scares the hell out of me, because you've got 20 points a ton, and once you get that slide, it's very hard to get it to stop. When it takes off, it just goes. There's no warning to it. Losing traction now. Macca urgently needs to deal with a loose strap before a simple problem turns critical. I'm going to get off this road, mate, and do that strap. OK, bro. But the highway's still too tight and too busy to pull up his oversized load. Finally, there's a possibility ahead. I've got a place we can pull off about 500 metres up here. Shut it down for me, would you, Andy? While Andy keeps traffic at bay, Macca can pull off the road. But a turn-off isn't an ideal stopping point. I've got to be quick here because I've, I've straddled a road, OK? Macca needs to work fast. He doesn't want to put his truck or other drivers at risk. This is the one that's loose. Padding must have, must have collapsed. That's got him. With Allegria secure, Macca can move on. But while one problem's behind him, another soon looms ahead. The Great Dividing Range, 
Australia's largest mountain range. Fully loaded, Macca's truck weighs 25 tonnes. A 10 kilometre climb will test his engine to the limit. Turbo boost is at 200, engine temps building up. Fail, and Macca will be stranded on the side of a mountain. That's full noise. Nothing left in it. As he pushes to the top... See how she's, like, losing power now? His truck's got no more to give. Macca's crawling. But at last... That's it, mate. That's the top. Hey, we'll have a bit of a look around here and uh, make sure we still got all the bits attached. After the tough climb, Macca wants to check the load. And the news isn't good. Well, you can see how close we are here. That distance is hard. Allegria's hull is inching forward. If Macca had gone much further, it could have smashed into the solid keel. There's only one solution to lift the hull. So I'm going to physically have to jack the front of the boat up. Raising a boat is a delicate operation. Normally. Even with the best equipment. But in a remote rainy truck stop, a car jack is all Macca has. Let me know if it's going up, will you, Andy? Because I can't get the jack right in the centre of that splash, so as I lift the boat, it's going to want to do that a little bit. So I'll do that a bit, shock it, and then I'll go around the other side and do that a bit. One slip and he could punch a hole clean through his $300,000 load. Matt Adams and his rodeo horses have survived the dust, dirt and fatigue. Mariba Showground, Paradise. He's made it to his base camp in Mariba. Next morning, it's show day. So we just got to uh, pull out the balls that we need for the night, take down the cans. The city of Cairns and today's rodeo are 65 kilometres away. It's one of the biggest events in the country. And Matt's reputation for breeding the toughest, meanest bulls is at stake. And my job relies on these bulls performing tonight. If I have one or two let me down, I go home for the unhappy person. Just one last obstacle stands in Matt's way. A sharp, winding mountain descent. You, you get a bit excited going to an event like this and try and push your truck a little bit hard down a hill like this and you'll end up with a real disaster. Matt has to be careful not to overwork his truck. Keep it on lower gear and save your brakes. If you do get your brakes on up, it just won't pull up. While Matt's taking it slow and steady, traffic's building up behind. Well, there's quite a bit of traffic backed up behind us, stopping way up here, so we'll just pull over and let some traffic around. But on a blind bend, some drivers won't wait. It's incredible risks people take. He just did overtaken on double lines there, you know, it's just, just ridiculous. I'm sliding and skipping in the back end. Ewan Stevens is fighting to stay in control of his 21-ton rig on a slick, steep mountain trail. It's actually starting to go sideways on me. So I'm trying to get the wheels turning again to gain traction. The biggest problem when you do lose traction is where you're going to end up. Over the right hand side, it's just a sheer cliff over into the river. At last, the mountain is behind them. It's always a nice feeling to be down here. My heart goes back to its normal heartbeat. And the boys can head for a well-earned rest at a local motel. Good night, Josh. Good night, Neil. Good night, Uncle Huey. Good night, Uncle Neil. Good night, Huey. Good night, Josh.
there's just one more drop-off remaining. At a remote patch of wet farmland, where the boys will unload the last of their five million bees. After that, they're home free. But nothing on this run comes easy. I'm going nowhere. Within sight of the finish line, the boys are bogged. We're stuck here at the moment, so we'll unload and get the weight off of her back. Not a good start. Unloading the truck will make it lighter and easier to rescue. But as Ewan knows, ground like this is just as treacherous for the forklift. You'll tip your machine over very, very easily. And I have tipped one of these over and it's not a very nice feeling. survived the hill and arrived at the city of Cairns. Couldn't ask for any better, really. Wheels have all travelled well and um, truck's done well. His work is almost done. Okay. Now it's up to the bulls. <laughs> Four days ago, Matt and Darrell began one of the biggest and toughest journeys of their careers. And after risking their trucks and their lives, they dealt with a crisis Balls out. to make their destination on time. Now it's the big night and time for Sports Machine to get to work. Matt almost lost him, but it's time for his star ball to deliver. Sports Machine's done Matt proud. He's won Bull of the Night and a $3,000 prize. And there's an extra bonus. Matt's wife and kids are here to share the moment. For this rodeo-loving outback trucker, it's the end of a pretty good day in the saddle. Two and a half thousand Ks and little bull come here and won the buck of the night, so yeah, gotta be real happy. You know, can't get much better outcome than that, that's for sure. Ewan Stevens is suffering for every last metre of his winter run. It's down to nephew Josh to try to pull the forklift free. Um, they want to pull him out backwards on the road, but the road's got a heap of slippery mud on it, so I don't reckon they've got any traction, but they might prove me wrong. Fail and it will cost the boys yet more time and money. But Josh is right. Ewan's going nowhere. They must free the forklift. Time for one more try. The whole operation is depending on Josh. Friday, turn the shit off a quick, want to get away today, nothing's going to happen. Come on, get on the fork, go and pick the pallet up. Put your forks in. And Josh's reward? A chance to show his uncle how the job should be done. It's a huge responsibility. A single mistake could cost thousands of bees and bucks. But Ewan's faith is rewarded. It looks like the next generation of Stevens is ready to carry on the family business. He's got a good head on him. He'll tip a couple over like I did when I was learning. As long as he don't do it today. <laughs> Finally, the last of the 260 hives are off the truck and home safe for the winter. After 1,200 gruelling kilometres on some of the roughest roads in Australia, the end is finally in sight. The Stevens have withstood the worst of the weather 
and hauled themselves through hell. Now, there's just one more bog to conquer. Go. Before it's home to Mole Creek, with another year's hard work done. At a wet outback truck stop, Macca needs to raise the front of his fragile freight. But it's serious business. Start jacking up 42 foot yachts. It's not child's play. With just a single car jack to do the job, he'll have to raise the boat one side at a time. If I let these go, they don't want to pull up right. It's a precarious manoeuvre. Come this with the boat. We've got a little bit more clearance on the keel. With one side raised, nearly all the boat's weight is resting on the other. If a strap lets go, Allegria risks sliding off the truck. Because right now the boat's a little twisted. Quickly, Andy and Macca need to raise the other side to level the boat. A disaster averted. With the bow clear of the keel, Macca can hit the road. The operation may have been a success, but the delay has given Macca another headache. We're really running about an hour to an hour and a half behind where I was really hoping we were going to be. And up ahead, he faces a whole heap of trouble. Torrential rain. It's a little bit like being on marbles. Narrow outback roads. As the road's wet, the edges are soft, and you can slip and skid really easy. And plenty of company. Especially if you jump on the brakes or something a bit quick. Bingo. Ahead, there's another wide load. We've got to behave ourselves right here, right now. We don't want to make the six o'clock news. But after surviving the hazards, comes a hammer blow. The route Mac has been planning for months is blocked. He'll have to find a new one. If we go the other way, just that other road. No, that won't get us through either. His only option are unknown back roads. In a rig this size, Macca could run out of room fast. If they've got this closed off, we can chip through along Brady Street. We'll have a crack. And there's more danger above. Look at the low line. Touching a power line could send thousands of volts coursing through the truck. I'm out of my oversized route, so we just be concentrating on what I'm going to do right now. Mac has got no choice but to push on. He still has half a continent to cross. But right now, he's heading off the map. <laughs> 